when did you realize like that wasn't for you anymore uh listening to comedy podcasts and you know learning about it all the comedians are always like you gotta be oh yeah as sharp as possible thank you for reminding <laughs> is that the intro, that was the yeah, intro? that's the intro that's the intro i'm that's, sorry man you gotta be as sharp as possible okay that's a good intro yeah thanks <laughs> Yeah, what was the question? Uh, uh, okay, so so you were listening to comedy podcasts, and then and then they would say how hmm. you know not being a hundred percent there, like you're you're gonna lose something. Yeah, no, that makes sense. There, there do, do you have um, your comedy guys like your top five? Uh, like in the in the city or in gen, like your in, your uh, the comics you look up to in general. Yeah, uh, Gary Goldman, uh, Louis C.K. Dave, um, classics. Yeah, classics. Mm. Um, I don't know who I would use to round up the the top five, but I ask because they're my old top, an old comic that I used to like that you would never expect me to like was um, was oh god damn D- Doug Stanhope. You know Doug Stanhope? Um, better with faces. I'll show you. He's um he is one of those guys that gets way like it's part of his thing getting wasted and going. Oh, like Ron stuff. White. Yeah, he's like Ron White. I, I don't know. I don't know how. Like I don't know. I can't imagine being first off being that drunk all the time. Okay. He's a fucking alcoholic. Um, I don't. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how you get on stage like that. You know, I like feel, all the time. I feel like alcoholism just runs rampant through. That's fair. What do you think that is? Why do you think that? What is it about comedians that addiction is a, is such a thing? Well, I feel like I mean to be a comedian, there has to be something wrong with you, it's either fair. growing up or in your life. So it's like what the chicken before the egg, you know. That's fair. I met a few comics. There's two in particular. No, three. There's three who have done this podcast. Where I'm like, do you you all three of you seem so even keel. Why the fuck are you doing this? Do you know Aaron Klein? Yep. Okay. Then you know, he's fucking sweetest guy. Yeah. Super calm, very just level nice. headed, like grounded. Yeah. Level headed. I have yet to see him get angry. Nothing bothers. Just the sweetest person. Uh, and then Tyler Fowler. Yeah. He's like he's like a manager in an office, and like he he just wears button up shirts and he's calm. He wears got glasses. And the last one is Vic Pondia. Pondia. You know Vic. I think so. Okay, I'll show you a picture of him too. He's also another one of those guys who's like just reasonable, you know. Right. Do you think do you find yourself to be a reasonable person? I think so, but I mean, depends on who you ask whether they agree with you or not. I guess do you think you are um do you think you have that crazy gene that makes you want to do comedy? Yes, I mean, I've been this told Oh yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I've I've ran across him, or yeah, 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 I don't know him, but comedy scene's big. Um, I'm sorry, you were saying? Yeah, I've been told I'm crazy my whole life. Really? So growing up, you you were told like you kind of off or something? Yeah, like I'm not like I come from a pretty traditional Mexican family, mm. uh, but I feel like being raised here, being you know the first generation here, I'm more American, so that you know I never really fit in into my community, or at least that's what it felt like was um did you get the uh you're acting too white uh no i haven't no not from my family my family's really supportive and Mm. so no i never got them from them but when i would like visit mexico or hang around more mexican people sure you're like oh this this guy's an american like mexican people your age yeah Mm -hmm. and how did that how did that feel growing up like did it feel isolating were you like ass whatever I mean, I guess I didn't know how to express the feelings back then, but it, it's like, you know, here being here in America, I was I was always considered Mexican, mm. but then when I go to like a little village or I visit family in Mexico, I'm the I'm the American. Right. Yeah. There is a. But that's that's I mean I feel like that happens to a lot of people. Yeah. No. I mean that. I mean I can't say no one was calling me African, but uh, <laughs> I, I get what you mean. There's a. <clears throat> like there's a disconnect between the culture of America and then your own personal culture. Like they they call this a melting pot, but I don't think it is. I think it's like a stew, right? Where 
It's like you, you fucking the the potatoes are in the stew with the tomatoes with the the garlic knots. But they all stay in their own neighborhoods, right? And Chicago in particular, dude, I didn't like. People say like, oh, it's segregated. I didn't realize, yeah, like, how fucking segregated. Yeah, and like, you, for you, it's normal. Well, you're right. Like, it is what it is. Do you think that's good? What do you? How do you feel about that? The segregation out here. I, I mean, I understand it. Like. A lot of them were immigrants, so they want to be around people they they know, you know, like yeah. have that common commonality with. Um, so I understand it, but yeah, like it's nice to blend with everyone else. Like the experience they had growing up and the experience they have here is like so different from everyone else's. So it would be awesome to to be more of a melting pot, but I'll take what I can get. I uh, I'm gonna have a hot take for you. I am pro segregation, uh, not, <laughs> and not in the legal, not in like the 1962. Uh, this is the whites water fountain near the black right. water fountain. Um, was there was there a Mexican water fountain? How did that work? I, that's a good question. I have no idea. I gotta look up on my history about that because there had to been like, I guess. I guess you would use the black. I, I would have. Yeah, I don't think whites would want to see you there. That's so. fair. That's fair. Um, no, I think like the preservation of culture uh, yeah. works within a segregation. Not man, segregation is a scary word. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you lose something mm-hmm. when you do mix too much, and like I get that. Like, there's so much about my culture that I don't know and that I haven't been exposed to because growing up, you know, I, I hung out around a lot of white people. Mm-hmm. Um, do you long for that culture or do you feel now now i do because like my my grandparents are getting older mm. uh, so is my mom and like once they're gone that's right that's like a a chest that closes that i can never get get stories out from them again were you were you close with them not really i guess yeah no uh yeah i'm i'm pretty close uh my my so my family just we just don't talk a lot mm. i don't know if that's mexican or just you know ours we don't talk a lot. Like, we can do a three-hour car ride and not say a word. It is and not weird? No, that's completely normal to me. Okay. Yeah. Huh. And, I, yeah, people will be like, they they would be weirded <laughs> out, but, like, I'm okay with the silence. No, I um, I get you in that. Okay, so, like, my family, we also don't talk a lot. And, and my family also uh, raised me around the whites. And... I don't want to say they, no, I'll say it. I'm going to say it the more aggressive way, but uh, keeping in mind that I'm, I'm not saying this out of anger, but they kind of tried to strip me from my culture right? So, and my history and other black people so that I could assimilate as much as possible and survive. Right. Like that was their mentality about it. That was your family's mentality. That was my family. That seems to be my family's mentality. Now, I post-Trump, they're, they're getting real back back into their black panther mode uh but pre-trump they were like no you're gonna make these white people like you make right. them calm or whatever yeah um and and for me I, mean, I don't know how it affected you but for me it really fucked me up that was a big part of why i moved to chicago was because i knew there was a big black community and and as of and within the past like year i've i've really found myself and i feel I feel whole, you know, like I was talking, talking to show Abe about this. Like last night I went to the South side, I went to Bobo's and it's just, just black people. And there's this feeling of like community. I don't feel like I have to explain myself. I don't want to say any particular spot. I don't want to call out any particular spot. I'm sure you can picture some spots in the North side where when I go there, I'm like, fuck, I just, I don't, I don't feel safe. It's like, I don't feel understood or connected to yeah. anybody here you're the odd person out right no matter what right do you i mean how how is it for you like how do you feel racially how do you feel in this community where there's not a lot of mexican comics i was talking right. to, to gabe gabe alviso about that like how is it for you do you long for that are you kind of like me are you good where you're at how, how are you feeling about that uh i i definitely want to learn more about my culture and get more in tune with it uh, but i I consider myself an American, you know, I was, I was born here. My grandparents risked their lives 
to to bring us here for a, a better life and i i you know i can't imagine having been raised in mexico because the opportunities there are nowhere near here that's fair you have a real appreciation for it. oh yeah well that's good man um did you do you know i have a memory issue uh i've heard you talk about it but i don't know exactly what the extent is okay I also don't think I should go to a doctor, and I'm not going to do that because I have a fear of doctors. Have you seen Memento? Yeah. Okay. It's not that bad. <laughs> so let's clarify. I'm not at Memento. When I get to Memento level, I'll go see a doctor. Does it get worse? I don't think so. Okay. I, don't, I hope. God damn. I hope not. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. What? what? <laughs> New fear unlocked. <laughs> um. So that being said, it, it it puts me in weird situations where like. Fucking ha- it happened at Lincoln Lodge recently where someone came up. You know when someone comes up to you and you... All the time. <laughs> yeah, you, you famous. Uh, but No, you, no, I mean like I know your face. I, do, right. I, c- I can't remember your name. And then they say, hey, Anthony. I'm like, ah, fuck, I feel bad. They do that or, or they're like... This situation, it was clear like, oh, I've had multiple of this. And this this girl came up to me and she hugged me. She was like, yeah, and I was like, oh, no. Oh, and I started, I started getting anxiety, and, and it, I kind, I kind of like blurted it out, like I, I, I don't remember. I'm sorry, yeah. uh, and, and it sucked because it's embarrassing, and I got to be like, it's a, it's a head injury plus trauma, and and, and then it makes it weird. Um, so all that being said, now that I made it weird, when did we meet? Uh, the first time I remember us meeting was at um, Three Dead Moose. I, I don't know if it was the time where you had that like really bad interaction. Yeah, I remember you. I remember that night. Yeah, because you went up and you you yeah. said what you said, and I was like, "Is this a bit like what's going on?" Like that's I think that's my first time seeing you go up. Um, but I think we like I don't know if that was that time or the next time. Then we talked about Atlanta. Um, mm. So the, yeah, I don't remember the timeline, but yeah, yeah. I uh, they I remember that three dead moose experience that was your first time seeing me do stand-up yeah that's a <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting way to kind of be introduced to me that's funny um yeah i talking about atlanta you knew like atlanta oh i love it as you should um that's awesome okay so we've we've interacted a fair amount throughout i wouldn't say i don't know i feel like for we haven't crossed paths too much, which I, is surprising. I guess that's why we we do that. What, what what was it that were, what made you want to reach out to do this? Actually, because that people don't reach out to do my podcast. Really, nobody gives a fuck about it. I don't. Wow. Yeah. yeah, I I liked it. Um, I liked watching some of the comics that I enjoy watching, and you don't have time to interact with people a lot. Right. So I was like, damn, I want to learn about Paul. I want to see what. Uh, Ooh, did you Zach- see Paul's? Yeah. No, that was. I reached out <laughs> to you after watching his and like. I'm one of Paul's biggest fans now because I, it, I, he said like, I'm afraid to go all in and like he, you know, he has good reasons, Sure, but I'm like, man, if, if Paul's afraid to make it, people, the wrong people have the confidence sometimes. Okay. Okay. I'm clicking. So you, you, when you saw Paul's episode, saw this was before show it, we didn't have you for, for Paul. I'm sorry. He's here. (laughs) Yep. I didn't take a nap today. Um, Paul was a very, very sweet. Oh, he's awesome. Very, yeah, very nice guy. And he, I can see why that would be the one to make you interested. So you were listening to episodes of your friends or people that you like. Yeah. Okay. Who else did you listen to? Uh, Zach. Zacho? Uh, uh, Zach. A- a- oh, Zach uh, Albers. Albers. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> Kiefer. Uh, Brandon uh, Kiefer? Yeah. He hasn't done this, has no? he? No? No, I don't think so. Or was it Zach talking about Georgia? Yes, Zach was talking about Georgia, okay. and, and Brandon got brought up. I still need to have Brandon on this. Um, but are you? do you have, like, a community in this? Do you Do you feel like you have friends? Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, – I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to look up his name because uh, my first open mic, Chris Sadiva or something. I, I forget his last name, but Chris – uh, he's in Pittsburgh now. First oh. mic at Riddles, he gave me the uh, the list, the open mic list uh, through Instagram, and that was my first mic. So like I had, I, he gave me like the golden key. Yeah, you were the, your first mic was at Riddles. Yeah. How long have you been doing this? Uh, 
my first mic was like a year and a half ago, uh, but then serious, uh, seriously a, about a year. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay. 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 I'm piecing you together. Like this, like, like you were saying, we don't get to see each other just out and talk like this. Right. And it's, it's like through the podcast is how I really get to know people. And that's so interesting, man. Like you, so you started comedy when I moved to Chicago, roughly. What was the decision? Why, why, why um, do this? It was like a bucket list thing. Okay. <laughs> and uh, yeah, one of the the cra- like the crazy things is that uh, the f- that Monday because I think Riddles is on Mondays. Uh, I had to put my cat down that morning. Ooh, okay. And then yeah, that was I have a joke about it. And it's like the, that was the hardest thing that I've ever had to do in my life. And then I was like, yeah, let me go tell some jokes. Like mm. I. Like I was like I could not drive home for a while, and then and then I was like I well I need to get this done too. It's funny how most people's it's like breakups, but you know yours are unique. Uh, put the cat down <laughs> is a new euphemism I'm gonna say for fucking now. <laughs> but do you, <laughs> it's interesting how like usually people get into stand up from trauma. Like it's very rare that I've met somebody who was like I was having a great day. <laughs> and then I decided to get on stage for three minutes and potentially right. bomb. How did it go at Riddles? Uh, I like had like two pages worth of written stuff. It took me like two and a half minutes to get through it. Yeah, I was shaking like a leaf. I had like the two drink minimum. Um, but no, I got through it. I got a. I think I got a chuckle, and yeah. that must have because if not, I, who knows if I would have kept doing it? I don't know. That's fair. And um, and now you've been doing it for about a year. So, are you feeling like Paul? where you don't know if you feel comfortable going all in or no i'm gonna go all in oh really yeah okay okay so then what's the plan like what do you see yourself like five years we'll say Uh, i'm gonna stay in chicago two more years uh third year i'm going to new york uh at least a year um that's more opportunities steel sharpened steel there sure um and then so that's four of the four-year plan but five years uh it's gonna start paying some bills really yeah Man, you are confident. I respect the fuck out of that. That's awesome. Well, have you been to New York yet? Uh, just for like a weekend, like birthday weekend, never for comedy yeah, or okay. yeah. Same. I haven't been to New York. Um, I got a buddy. Uh, we both left uh, California around the same time. His name's Frankie Oi. <laughs> you got you. You got to see this fucking guy. So so this dude, <laughs> this dude moved to New York and now lives in a van in cool. new york and he lives like a goddamn vagabond like he really goes at it like i you know when we were here it is you know when we were when you were saying um you know like the idea of paul being kind of concerned about going all in or your, your confidence of like no i'm doing this that's something i have just a good deal of respect for and it's not even just with stand-up it's like with anything, anything that somebody throws themselves into, and right? It's like a respect for what you're doing. Oh, I mean, you moved here for comedy, right? Y- y- like, comedy and self realization, but comedy, yes. Yeah, that's so like that. I have so much respect for that. Like people that move here, like Kayla Horton, I, mm. I, I learned that about her yesterday. Yeah. Uh, like that's fucking awesome. It's scary, dude. It's it's I'm okay. Oh, oh, I'm so excited for you. I'm excited for you for when you hit your goal of going to New York because you'll have built up comedy chops out here, which is going to be great. This is a great city to build that up. And I'm excited for you to experience the whirlwind of going to a new place like that. Have you have you ever moved like far away from everything? Yeah. Okay. Where where did you move? Uh, The first time uh, I was in the Marines and they sent me to. uh, Okay. Okinawa, Japan. The f- never mind. I'm gonna shut the fuck up with what I was just saying because you've already experienced it to a far more extreme level. What the fuck? You were in the Marines? Yeah. Have you? Ever, do you talk about that on stage? I have a joke. Yeah. You just one? Yeah, I need to work on more stuff. But you're saying you were in the Marines like it's normal, and you don't seem like you were a Marine. And I mean that. In I get a- that a lot. I wasn't a good one to begin with, so. <laughs> what makes a good Marine? Uh, someone that, like, follows orders blindly and. Uh, so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why they call them jarheads, right? That's fair. That's fair. Why? Okay, we got to dig into this. 
Why the Marines? Uh, a couple reasons. Um, one, my friends from high school, uh, my buddy Oscar joined the Navy. My buddy Charles joined the Army, and I wanted to be better than both of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you were like, let me just go as far to the extreme. You went right under Navy SEAL. Well, Oscar's a SEAL, so oh, I eat him. Oh, shit. Is he I didn't, you? Yeah, he beat me. Okay. That's Oscar's scary. I don't fuck with Oscar. So how in, what, right out of high school? Yeah. Nope. And uh, in high school, like in, because I went to high school for two years in Blue Island, Eisenhower. They have a ROTC program. Mm -hmm. uh, and we had a teacher. His name was Master Sergeant Kirkland. And Master this guy Master Sergeant Kirkland. Yeah. And, it's like a superhero. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, I... You look up Marine in the dictionary, he's like, that's him. Okay. And I was like, fuck, I want to be like this guy. Okay. I want to dig into that here. Why? What was it about him that you wanted to be like? Uh, he was just so, like, stoic, stern, like, whatever he said was going to happen. Uh, complete confidence in mm. himself. Uh, oh, like, you never seen him, you never see him, like, a hair out of place. So he was just very put together. Very. Were you not put together at that time? Am I? I don't think I am yet. I, <laughs> am I ever? I don't know. Well, you seem, um, the, what you're describing, I'm sure you've seen uh, uh, fucking Stanley Kubrick. God damn it. Uh, suck a golf ball through a water hose. Full metal jacket. Full metal jacket. Was he like, was he like that guy? Yeah. And you wanted to be like that guy? Yeah. That's crazy for me. Okay, so so you saw him and you saw your friends go out and do their military stuff. Yeah. So you go, you signed up for the Marines. What was it like? When you, was it what you expected? Uh, no, it was. No, it wasn't. What did you expect and what did you get? Uh, I thought it was gonna be like a lot harder mentally. Okay. But like the first day they get on the bus and they start yelling at you to get off and like get ready, and I'm like, oh my my mom yelled at me worse than this. <laughs> Did you tell him? You're like, man, my mom speaks in Spanish. She beats me with chanclas, bitch. Yeah, in my in my head, I was just like, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I knew I fucked up the first day. That's funny. So, so you got worked out and shaved your head, all that. Yeah, yeah. Did you? This is this is the obvious question. Combat? No. Um, That's why you're I'm still stable. I'm very very lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, out of so I went to a school in North Carolina for combat engineering, mm -hmm. and out of 31. Only three of us went to Okinawa, and us three didn't see combat. The rest of the school got sent to Afghan, Afghan or Iraq, one of the two. So when you were in Okinawa, what did you do? I uh, got ready for war. Um, but yeah, we got there, and a month before the last group of people got sent to war. Mm. So I was like a month away, or you know, a little bit more than that, but I was the next group that didn't. How were you? So what year was this? 2011 okay we man that whole 9 11 thing we really took that seriously oh um, yeah <laughs> that's the same war right yeah that's what started it i believe Ho okay. hopefully i don't say something that's like wrong and, i mean know. i don't fuck it. i watched uh vice have you seen vice some of them it's like a no no not, not vice or? news oh, okay. um the the hold on let me look it up it's it was a great film it's about um nice. no, oh I, with dick cheney yeah 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 uh, and who else is, someone else is in it um uh fucking uh christian bale plays dick cheney right kills it uh yeah oh when doesn't he um oh my god and it's fantastic and it really i like the way it breaks down um what that war was really about yeah, who? There was another really good. It was in uh, Michael Scott or Steve Carell. Steve Carell. Steve right. Carell plays uh, Rumsfeld. Yeah, kills it. That was a really good movie because they like at the end they like kill someone to get them a new heart, right, or something. So yeah, yeah, someone dies and he gets a new heart. It's it's wild. So like, okay, so you're you're in the Marines not for any sort of patriotic passion. Yeah, no, uh, that was I guess the last thing. Um, like I felt like I owed something to this country that took my family in. You're okay. We're digging, dog. We're gonna get into this. We get digging in the weeds. Okay, it's making more sense to me now. When you said, you know, you owed something to this country. Your family came from such and such. I'll tell you, if you've listened to the podcast, I'm sure you've heard me talk. Oh shit! What have you? <laughs> what have you heard? What have you? What do you know? Before? I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure people. I mean, people. 
don't love this country people hate it and i get it like it and sure. they and it's your right to like luckily you can express yourself to do that here absolutely <laughs> i feel bad i feel scared like i'm gonna take out a gun no and kill no it. i mean i i do not have the same feeling towards yeah. this country i i you know could, and i know that flag might say otherwise the flag is probably confusing for people I've had I've had people walk in and and be like an American flag means something to a lot of people and it means a lot of different things but then when you add the African uh colors it changes it up but I have uh, a serious issue with this country and it's it's tough because I acknowledge there is a sense of privilege I recognize that um there are good things. Like, I don't want to go to Mexico. That doesn't seem fun. Not even just because I don't speak Spanish. That really doesn't seem fun. Granted, I don't know shit about Mexico. But, like, this country is, to me, built on manipulation and blood. Just fucking nothing but, but the blood of the innocent is how we got to what we got. And there's so... So what country is it? Ireland? I don't know. Do you know anything about They Ireland? spilt a lot of blood to get their independence. People kill a lot of people. And but there's something, I guess, especially despicable to me about this country. On a personal level, for yeah. sure, obvious reasons. And but I don't wanna I don't wanna delve into my bullshit. People who listen to this shit know my bullshit. I'm so curious about yours because you don't you don't seem to connect with your Mexican heritage or your culture in that way, but you seem okay with that. Yeah. Your jar head is coming out. There's just nothing behind your eyes. It's very scary. I love it. Dick's so hard right now. Uh, what, why? What? What were you taught in the Marines? How? How were you? How did you perceive that? Like, okay, I got a question. <clears throat> were what were you like pre Marines? What were you like post Marines? I I feel like if you talk to my friends, I they didn't change me a lot, which is pretty odd maybe mm -hmm. i mean i definitely got the training and i got the mentality but like at the end of the day like i still am like just goofy you know like you just want to have a good time you know laugh do you think things would have been been different had you gone to combat probably i mean depending on what happens over there right because sure. like sometimes you go over there and you don't nothing happens yeah i watched jarhead you've seen that jar you've seen jarhead yeah is it is there a lot of downtime? Is it a lot of just like, what yeah. the fuck? Oh, a lot. That's what I've heard from. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want action? Did you yeah. I go in 18 years old. Like I'm sure. fucking stupid. And how old are you now? 31. Oh, same age. Cool. So you're, so you're 18 and there is this almost primal. Yeah. No, it's like, oh, these guys are fucking with America. Like I'm, I'm an American. I'm from here. Like, That's Okay, so keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep yeah, going. that's, I mean, I get it. It's stupid now, like 31 year old me thinking about 18 year old me thoughts. Sure. I, oh, it's fascinating to me because did, did they take care of you? You good? Like with money and shit now? Uh, I mean, yeah, I, I'm not bad. I, I guess I feel like anyone in the, I, you know, this is actually one of my more patriotic beliefs. It, I have the utmost respect for the people in the military, um, um, which I think surprises people because how much shit I talk about America. Uh, but my, my grandfather was in the military and I had friends in the military and I acknowledge the difficulty and the sacrifice that goes with that. Yeah. And I think that anyone in, anyone in the military, sociopath or not, should be compensated heavily for that 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 you you literally gave away your rights for like four years yeah. if not more right that my you had to sign a document that yeah. Was like yeah i'm a slave yeah <laughs> i'm a number to the government what's your number dude well it was my social but yeah oh, okay okay you didn't get your social security number tattooed on your arm yeah, no. Badass. <laughs> um no but i have the utmost respect for people that do that because one i'm not doing it two i acknowledge that it's it keeps us protected from other bullshit and I think anyone that leaves the military should be taken care of. Yeah. 
And I think what's another reason why I get upset with this country and kind of disgusted is like, it doesn't seem like that's the case. You're right. It's, it's terrible how, how like veterans that deserve the help don't get it. And it's like the amount we spend on defense and like none of it gets to the people. Why? Business. Money. <laughs> like people with power want the money in their pockets. It's not going to get to the people that need it or deserve it. Okay. But then why aren't you mad? Uh, why aren't I mad? Because it's, I don't know. It's like, it's, it's always been like this since the Roman army. You know, it's always been like this. So it's human nature, hmm. I think. I think it's white nature. Get ready. I I I think. Be, okay, so I I do have some get, questions please, for you. Please, for, uh, please, please. For comedy, can I put the? I yeah, need dude, to get out of shot. Fuck you want, dude. This is a fucking lackadaisical ass podcast. All right. I, yeah, I wrote down some questions. Oh, dude, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. This makes me so happy. Nobody asks me anything on this podcast. Everyone wants to talk about themselves. You have a whole list. Uh, do you have any pre-show rituals? Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, no, I do not. I okay. Well, if there's a ritual, it's just take a deep breath and go up. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you've been posting a lot of clips lately, like especially from uh, Comedy on State. Mm-hmm. Um like you're you're doing it for a reason is that for more exposure or um and do you, do you mind burning your material i yeah I, I just wanted to know your thoughts on um part of it is i guess you could say exposure to me i don't like to use the word content uh content to feels like it's you're stripping away the human hum, humanity from art you right know what i mean it's like a product yeah it's like def- no i'm making I'm, uh, if you're not if you make a movie you're not a content creator you're making a you're a filmmaker if you're a comic you're not making content you're making jokes okay you're you're you know you're doing whatever so for me it's it's put this stuff out there let people see that I am doing things I'm consistent I'm around you'll keep seeing me right uh, moving to Chicago made me realize like oh the people have to see you a lot all the time all the time if they don't see you you don't exist to them yeah and I I recently well I don't know how recent it was but I try to keep a story on my Insta 24 7 that's the move dog yeah that's the move and that's what's cool about this podcast is take these clips there's something so, even if it's not my face you hear my stupid voice something 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 um, and the the burning material stuff it's like people aren't paying to see me yeah <laughs> like, so i'll make more material that's fine yeah um you recently received uh an asl certification i don't know if it was like a different <laughs> level or <laughs> yeah this is so different dude i like this i really like this um so i'm an american sign language interpreter i have my bachelor's i have my eipa and your EIPA is um, a K through 12 certificate. Okay. And then I was under the impression. <laughs> they got you. Mm, <laughs> I was under the impression <laughs> that, that that's how you know anger is about to come out. Like nobody says I was under the impression and then something positive happened. Yeah, I was under the impression I was, was going to get my have blood a terrible blood. time. Yeah, right. <laughs> I was under the impression you were going to bite my dick, but you ended up sucking it. No. I was under the impression that that was a national certification. Which it is. It should be. It is, technically. And I got to Chicago, got to Illinois, and I was like, all right, let me find jobs in the field I studied for the past goddamn 10 years. And God damn, you've been in that field. Uh, let me, I'm exaggerating. I started when I was 19. I'm 31. I've been in it almost a decade, though. Yeah, that's insane. And, and so in my head, I'm like, I'm good. I got a job. I got this. Oh, this is, all, this is what college was for. <laughs> This is this moment, and I got out here, and they're like, "Well, you don't have the uh, Illinois certification." Yeah. It's like, "Bitch, I am been doing this for like six, seven years now. Yeah, like I know what I'm doing." And so I had to. It spent. I took a. It took a year to to get my um, Illinois certification. And you want to know what's fucked up? I'm gonna tell you what's fucked up, Anthony. I <laughs> I got offered a job that's connected to New Mexico. And now they're like, all right, well, you got to get the New Mexico certification now. I, 
it. Are they paying for it? No. Oh, I, you, all right, pay us $40 Jesus. and we'll give, you can send out that application. Then it's another 90 for this other application. It's a fucking racket. <sighs> okay. The end of that statement. I'm okay. So, so do you consider yourself bilingual? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, people, some people do not perceive American Sign Language as a language, which is insulting. Uh, to me and deaf people in general. Right. Um, but there's grammar, there's syntax, there's punctuate. Punctuation is not the right word because it's technically not a written form. But no, it's a language, man. It's, okay, yeah. it's a language. And, and I, I mean, it's an English, right? But it's like, is. It's a different, um, uh, different word order. Oh, okay. So, ew, God. Do you, you speak Spanish? Yeah. Okay. Fuck. Is there a sentence in Spanish that is, if you said it literally in English, it wouldn't make sense? I think a lot of them, but I couldn't tell you off okay. the top of my head. Let's say uh, conjugations, right? So if I'm if if it's in the yo form, um, that's I. So like uh, voy ir uh, a tienda. Voy ir a tienda. Yo voy a la tienda. Say it again. That was sexy. Yo voy a la tienda. Yo voy a la tienda. So you're saying. I'm going to the store. I go. I go to the store. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you could also, but if you had changed it, it would have been, I'm go, or I have gone. So it would have been. Yeah. Fui. Fui? Yeah. Fui a la tienda. Okay. And ASL, it would be, I'm going to, I'm going to say it and then I'm going to show you with a sign. No one's going to see it on camera, but it's eyebrows up. Then uh, proper, I'm doing proper ASL. It would be eyebrows up, store, I go. So it would look like this. And your why, eye- why did you why did you what got you in ASL? So I was studying I was studying mass media communications in college because I'm supposed to go to college and that means you're smart or some dumb shit, dude. I fucking. Mm. Sorry. Get yeah, get ready. You asked you 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 did this. You gave me alcohol and you asked me questions. Well, well I got some other questions. All right, let me rant about this then I'll get yeah, to the other um, questions. So why did I why did I get into ASL? So I'm in I'm in I'm in college, mass media and communications, and I'm like, oh I'm not learning anything. Like I don't know any skills. You could probably load a sniper if anything. You learn something in the Marines, like I literally wasn't learning anything. I didn't know it, it, when this, I wanted to do performing since forever, but everyone, including my family, got in my head to think that like, that's crazy. And so in my head, I was like, well, I gotta just do a thing, but I wasn't being taught anything. Yeah, I could tell you about theories of plenty of shit, but I wasn't, I didn't know how to do anything. So my mom, she was driving by the school of the deaf in Riverside, and then and I had been bitching at her for this whole time because she's the one who's like, you gotta go to college, and so then she called and she was like, learn sign language. And I was like, okay, and so I learned, I like, I learned, I went online, I learned the alphabet, so I learned how to finger spell, and then I learned like basic sentences, and I just kind of hung out with deaf people until I picked it up, yeah. and then I took formal classes. That's cool. Thank you, <laughs> thank you. I uh, I mean, learning any language, right? It's like- yeah, it's a thing. Yeah, it's an experience, um, and then like you get to tap into that community. I don't know if that's the right. That sounds no, 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 no. Deaf community is a community. They have a whole culture. Yeah, yeah. Like that's so cool. They yeah they they don't like us. They really don't <laughs> like us. They, like they talk mad shit. They really don't like us. Um, and for in some ways, good reason, man. Like, I know I was talking to Tyler about this, but the deaf community and, and people with disabilities in general. Do you know anybody with disabilities? Uh, what do you mean by, I mean, I guess disability is anyone that isn't a hundred percent. Sure. Or? Yeah. Let's call it that a hundred percent, like less percentage of a human. Uh, no, that's no. pretty <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, but like somebody that's got hearing eyes, mental arms, legs, anything. I have like a couple of cousins that have down syndrome. Sure. Okay. Perfect example. People will act like they give a fuck and they don't. Right. Like with deaf people, and when I go on stage, I'm like, I'm an American Sign Language interpreter. Oh my, oh, good for you. Good for you, some bitch you don't know. You don't care. I that, There's something. But that's the thing. Yeah. Nobody cares about any of it. Ex- Nobody. Sh- that's one thing I learned in the Marines. Like, no one gives a fuck. No one. No one. But I don't like the, the, the pretending. 
Right. There's yeah. Something about that. Like when it comes to America. In, the, in, 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 uh, not ingenuous. Is it disingenuous. Disingenuous. It is ingenuous. disingenuous or disingenuous. I'm not sure. One of the two. I don't like that. It's like. Yeah, that's that rubs me the wrong way too. Yeah, you know who you would like? Uh, do you know Hunter Hirsch? Oh yeah, we, yeah, I had a show with him yesterday. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, Hunter's because he's Aspergered the fuck out, so he can't be disingenuous. It's great. Right, you, you can trust anything he says, but I don't like it. It's fake, and it and it makes me paranoid. If somebody is being like that, I'm like, what are you, what's your fucking angle? Like, what are you trying to get from me? Right. And like, yeah, I never know when people are being sarcastic. Oh, you, never you, you have an issue with that? I don't know. I don't know if I do or not, or maybe I'm just like overthinking it. Because mm-hmm. sometimes I'm, I, I mean, I, 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 I like sarcastic. I think it's funny. Sure. I think being sarcastic is funny. Sometimes I'm like, am I, am I being sarcastic? I don't even know myself sometimes, <laughs> which is fucked up. But like, I never, I never do it with uh, malice. Sure. It's joking. There's a playful. Yeah. But you should be able to feel like, oh, you're being playful versus you're being an asshole. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you're being an asshole, like. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what else is on your note. You have a whole goddamn two sheets uh, of paper. I mean, I guess I just want to talk to you about like your favorite stuff because like, I feel you can tell a lot about what people would choose. Like what three movies would you bring to a desert island? Like, <laughs> like what, what do you choose to invest your time in? Um, stand up, obviously, but I've, and I don't know if you've gotten, or if you're in this place, um, I used to be obsessive to me being a stand up comedian was everything. It was my identity. And I was admittedly insufferable. I was a fucking asshole. Yeah. Um, if you talk to people from back home from California that knew me, I'm sure they would be like, yeah, he was irritating. Yeah. Because in my head, it was like, well, I just got to make it as a comic. That's who I am. I mean, if you're not a comedian, then you're not shit. Like, that's kind of how I looked at things. And then when I moved out here and I expanded more, um, I realized that stand-up is a piece of me. You get It's a balance, yeah. It's a balance. Um, but stand-up is one of those things. I love it. I love comedians. I love artists. I love Show Abe, even though he hates me. <laughs> yeah, you hate me. Don't act like you. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. Um, no, but but I I, I love stand up. I yeah. think it's I think it's amazing. I've I've like intake in took and take the I've like listened to so much stand up and read and watch this past year. It's consumed me. Yeah, and it's 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 interesting because it it changes the way you view it in a lot of ways. Like, right? You can't enjoy it. I feel like I don't enjoy it as much. Same. Same. But that's also like, well, I'm the one going to put this up. Like, I'm like, this sounds so like fucking. Please. Uh, like, I got to carry on the torch. Mm, mm. No, I know what you're saying. That it's a, it's almost a, become a tradition. It's become a culture in its own. <laughs> and what I've heard from other podcasts, I didn't think this. I didn't say this. Okay. Uh, okay. It's one of the oldest art forms is storytelling. Yeah. Yeah. And then laughter is such a it's a reaction it's in like you can't you someone could fake laugh but you can tell maybe i don't know but a, like a, a genuine a crowd full of laughter like so there when that, this is something i learned from mass media communication there's body language cues right um and it's called it's your your crow's feet so if someone has crow's feet they're laughing sincerely or they're smiling sincerely if they're not they're faking it <sighs> nice um and yeah I, I man it's a beautiful art form to, to be able to elicit such a positive response, have control over that, and connect with people. It's a beautiful, like, I love this art form. I love this art form. And then um, music as well. Yeah. I, so I play bass. There it is. I play bass and I rap for fun or whatever. Um, and then as of recent, I've been taking jujitsu. Cool. Yeah. Oh, you fight. I've had some classes. You're in the Marines. Come on. <laughs> Don't fuck it. Fuck you. If you if we got into a fight, you could kill me, right? I mean, that's a goal. <laughs> what type of shit do they teach you? Uh, it's called Marine Corps mixed martial arts. Okay, what does that look like? Uh, there's like different belts, like in a lot a lot of the martial arts. But sure. at the end of the day, it's like you need to not eliminate the enemy, but uh, stop the threat. 
Okay. And as long as the other person's breathing, they're a threat. So you, that's that's terrifying. I thought it was like as long as their bones are intact, they're a threat. But no, if they're breathing, they're still a threat. Yeah, they. I mean, you never know what they have. They have a gun. You could break their arm, and they could still use the other gun to shoot you. This is why it's it's you're scary, and nobody knows you're scary. And that's I'm glad that we're getting this on film, <laughs> so that people know not to fuck with you. Because look, I, be, mm, I have you been heckled yet? Um, maybe. Yeah, but like it's never like I all like I you know you take it. It's not you're being heckled because you're not being good. Sure, you, you deserve know, it. So even sometimes, true. but sometimes like <laughs> some some being people asshole. are drunk. Yeah, like I I was at uh, Emerald Lyle. Yeah, and uh, this lady walked in, and it was like her birthday with like a couple other people, and she like took the mic from me, mm. and it was I was like uh, like I don't want to kill the vibe, you know. Sure, sure. Uh, so I let her say her piece. I'm, I'm like trying to get it back. I'm like trying to work with her and like seven minutes passed or whatever. Or it felt like that. Did she literally take the instrument? Yeah. Would you like, okay, I've been doing, get ready. I'm being an old man. I know we're the same age. I'm be an old man in comedy years, boy. Hey, you should never, yeah, I fucked Seven up. years. I fucked up. You never let go of it. I know. I, I, I asked, uh, <laughs> fuck, I'm, I feel bad for not remembering his name. That's uh, fine. Is it Todd? Todd. Not Todd. The, the guy who runs Emerald Lyle. Okay. Uh, great comic. He. I asked him afterwards, like, "Oh, how did I handle that?" Yeah. And uh, I don't. He, he didn't get back to me. But then I asked him again later, and he's like, "Oh, I mean, it happened, and you still went through your set. Like you. It's a learning experience. Yeah, it's all learning experience. But I would say your power is this because it represents who is in control on stage. Right. I remember, and, and I'm speaking from just ex dumb experience. I remember when I first started doing stand-up, I would do that a lot. I would relinquish. I would get heckled a lot because of my style. And I would relinquish the mic. I would be like, you think you're so fucking good? Get on stage and do it then, bitch. And it was like the logic made sense, but the approach was wrong. And... As soon as you give that, like, if someone's gonna if someone's gonna speak into the mic and they're really doing that, you grip it. Okay. Well, I'm holding it now. Sorry, I don't want to talk out of the thing. Like, I'm holding it now. You're not taking the mic from me. You're I'm, talking. I'm allowing you. I'm allowing you to say this, and then you get the fuck off, and I keep this mic. Right. I have a vice grip around it right now. Let me chill out. Um. So that would be my suggestion in that situation. Is if someone's gonna do that. You just make sure you physically, un they understand that like, this is yours and you you have the right to say something, right. but this is mine. You know what I mean? That's my feelings. So I, I haven't listened, maybe I haven't listened to enough, but uh, who do you, who do you look up to in the scene? Of, or, like, yeah. Cause I, I mean, we all have comics that are untouchable. That, you sure. Know. Sure. Um, outside, like, yeah. Let's make this Chicago centric. I like yeah. that. Who do I look up to? Who do I appreciate? Um, I care and love about her very much, and I, I, I she is gonna have a huge ego if she listens. <laughs> uh, I don't want that. But, but Rachel Hall, I don't know if you know her at all, um, but she's like my best, one of my best friends yeah. I've seen, hands down. And she, I think, is very funny, works really hard, and doesn't get the due credit that she deserves right um so there's her uh there's this guy uh you've been to barton yep so you know leon rogers yeah okay i have the utmost respect for leon rogers because he's been doing this for so long and he's been doing it for so long anytime i see him at least at bar 10 he has a sense of control over the audience and a comfort on stage that's undeniable. Oh, 100 percent, yeah. Yeah, uh, Ty Riggs. Ty Riggs. So another comic from the from the West Side lives in the South Side now. He's he's a good buddy of mine now. Um, he is himself. He is himself regardless of who's around or what's going on, and he's kind of to himself, and that's also okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so Ty Riggs is another one. Another guy I've been enjoying is uh, Lero. Uh, we were actually just hanging out last night. Another guy who is himself. 
I think the people that I'll bring up, Tiny Thickums. Do you know Tiny Thickums? Yeah, yeah, I, I saw not know Tiny Thickums. All the people that I will bring up as people I look up to yeah. are people that are 100% unique and genuine and, to me, special. There's another – um, what is his name? God fucking damn it. What is his name? I'm going to find this. Um, yeah, I saw – tiny at tito's secret location show and that yeah that was awesome mm-hmm. so there. i fucking had him on the goddamn mic on this this podcast jesus tall long hair sorry it's the memory this is the memory thing can yeah. i say right now this is the memory thing like i should know this person's name i've talked about this guy i literally did a whole fucking podcast with him See, um, I, I feel like this is just normal. Is that normal? Yeah, they, we have so much to remember now. I think I'm just paranoid. I'm just a paranoid goddamn maniac. But um, I'm going to find him because it's going to bother me. But and, and this is most of the comics in the scene because there is a genu- general sincerity about most people out here. And I guess I love... Genuine, genuine, being genuine. I do. Yeah. I love the the genuineness. I love the sincerity. And I love the... um... Is there... uh, Zach O'Ryan. Zach O'Ryan. I don't know. You know, Zach O? Man. Was he the last episode? No, no, no. It's been a minute. He was an episode where we were uh, driving to a show. And I was talking to him in the car. And I got to learn a little more about his life, which is fascinating. I want him back on for a proper episode. But Zacho is another one of those guys who is so comfortable as him. And I think that these comics out here, I think the best comics out here are the ones that know themselves and that say that that are themselves no matter what, no matter the odds. And it to me is a beautiful thing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's hard to find. What were you going to say? Is there... Is there anything about this comedy scene that bothers you, like other than ingenuineness? Is that is that disingenuous? Disingenuous. Oh my god. Yeah. Um, I split up this scene into three sectors. There's the north side, there's the south side, and there's the improv. Okay. So to me, north side comics are comics that are stand-up comedians yeah. in the north side specifically. Where's the cutoff? The the physical the physical line, bartend and below. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bartend T- Taylor Street Tap, Northside, yeah. Bartend, yes. Southside. <laughs> bartend and below. I have yet to see anything above bartend where I'm like, oh, okay, this is a south side or a west side vibe. Yeah. Yet to see it. So until I see that, bartend No, you're not gonna see it. Below. If you, so bartend below, if you're like a South side comic, that's a whole other world. Yeah. And then there's the improvisers. If I'm too, oh boy, you're getting me in trouble. It's, it's, <laughs> it's funny that you have that split up. Cause my split is uh city and suburb mics or Ooh. city and suburb comics. See, I don't have a, I don't have a car, so I can't get to the burps. Right. So I, when I, whenever I get to that point, maybe I'll be with you. Um, but what, what difference do you see between city and burbs? Uh, they, I think Burb comics get to perform in front of real audiences a lot more. Sure. They have a lot less stage time, but does that matter when you find out what really gets normal people to laugh? And we, we had this conversation or I heard overheard part of this conversation at Mojo's and Joliet. Um, Adam, I forget his name or his last name. Adam went to the new trigger warning, not the new, but the old trigger sure. warning yeah. and he's like oh it was awesome i hit up four mics on monday uh, and there but then the other comments were like well what was the audience like and they're like oh it was mostly comics but i got to go up on stage four times and they're like well i'd rather go up one santa vic and get real people to give me feedback and so that's uh, one of the big things and it's it's just like that's sp- i think that's what is so funny i think it's hilarious how it's so different please elaborate uh, you just don't see suburb comics and vice versa. Right. 
And I, I mean, I get it. Like, why would you like leaving the city is a hassle coming to the city. Every, it's always a hassle. So everything's a hassle in comedy. Right. And I get it. Like they can drive 20 minutes and with no traffic and hit up like a mic with a real audience. Like why not do that? And why hit, try to hit up five mics on a Sunday or something in the city. Um, I mean, they both have their, their heavy hitters and stuff, but. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Four quadrants. I like this. Burbs, North Side, South Side, Improv. Right. Would you like me to? I'm, I'm the not, only one I'm not very familiar with is Improv. Okay. Improv to me, lowest on the the total pole, because yeah, barely an art. I would say. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's crazy, dude? <laughs> I got my start in Improv. It's, it's since helpful. I, was, I get it. It's since I was 14, man. I did that shit for like six, seven years. Wow. Yeah. And, but improv is the lowest, not because the art form itself is low, but the audience. The quality of the people. The, <laughs> <laughs> You're the one on camera. I can cut myself out. I was an AI. This whole video, I was an AI voice. Um, <sighs> no, but the, the, there's. The people that go to improv and the people that sign up for improv, generally speaking, not every, not all of you, if you listen, um, w just want to have fun with your friends and feel funny. But the audience is not critical enough and is not, you, you don't bomb an improv in these improv places because the audience is so sweet and nice and supportive. And that's beautiful. You're, you're at a fucking high school uh, talent show. And people are going to give you a huge benefit of the doubt. And then... And you have the support of the group, the team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You yes, have the team up there. It's a whole... It's, 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 it is a difficult art form. Yeah. But the audience, the type of people that are in that art form will not push themselves to be funnier from what I've seen personally. Yeah. And it disappoints me because that art form... I've seen good improv. Yeah. Good improv is amazing. Bad improv is so hard to watch. Oh, so. yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, yeah, I've recently um, seen both. Yeah. And then I think then then if we're going to go in a ranking thing, then it's the burbs. My thing with the burbs is, yes, you are in front of a real audience, but you're not around comics that are better than you. Right. And seeing comics that are so, like I was talking about Leon, so much – so beyond yeah. and been doing this for so long because then you know infuriating sometimes it's crazy it's crazy sometimes 30 40 years it's have yeah they like people give me tags mm -hmm. and i've been working on this fucking joke for a couple <laughs> months you know not that right. long but it's like they see it for a few seconds yeah and they're like oh i got you yeah um, like here this is yours mm -hmm. you can have it so the burb, I would then put the burbs, and then north and south have different skills to me. So the the south side has the skill of uh, crowd work, crowd okay. work, being present, being uh, being just generally entertaining. North side has skillful writing right. and nuanced perspective. Right, um, and that's how I would. I agree. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I. Okay, we okay. I'm gonna wrap this one up. All right, and I. I enjoy talking with you. Bob. Yeah, man, I'm glad we did this. I am. Yeah, I'm glad. I want to talk more about Avatar. I know you love <laughs> with it. With the Last Airbender. Yeah. Go, go ahead. We'll do that. Yeah. Uh, did you hear they're like coming out with a new series and I, like the comics where they like looking for his mom and stuff? I did, and I'm scared. Oh, the live action. You're scared of the live action. I'm scared of any like, anything. I guess as long as they don't fuck with my at my three seasons of Avatar, yeah. just don't touch those. Yeah. I haven't seen the M Night Shyamalan one. No, I haven't either. Yeah, no. fuck that. Just don't touch my avatar, and I'm good. That's how I feel about it. Everything else is a plus. Yeah, so. do whatever you want. Just don't touch my avatar. Yeah. Don't make a fucking reduxed version. Don't edit it. Just I have it. I own that bitch. Same. On. Same. Man. You got you got that DVD? Yeah, I got it on Blu-ray. Right. You don't, over you here. don't know when it's gonna leave if at Netflix. I want it. Yeah, fuck that, man. I'm I'm a doomsday prepper. Like for entertainment, like yeah. I got, I got Polaroid cameras and disposable cameras and DVDs. Like you're not taking my shit from me. Um, I'm sorry, but what what other things? That was that was no, that was the main one. Like uh, movies. I don't know if you've uh, everything, everywhere, all at once yet. Oh, fuck, man, it should win. I, I know. Oh, you so you seen it? Yeah, yeah seen yeah, that yeah, shit. Okay, okay. It should win. Yeah, win. It, it's such an original. Oh, 
so original. Yeah, it's like nothing you've ever seen before. It's how many times can you say that? Not many recently, right? I've seen how many MCU films I've seen? It's fucked up because I like the MCU. Me too. And it's it's like I, I'm 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 good. Yeah. Oh, Ant Man. Oh, is he gonna do more Ant Man shit? All right. Unless it's like a Spider Man Secret Wars, like uh, that's that's yeah. all I'm hoping out for. Yeah, holding yeah, out yeah. for. Yeah. Um. Okay. For this one, can you look into the camera and say it? Who would you suggest to be on this podcast, and why? That you haven't had already? That I have not had. Have you had uh, Richard Gomez? I have not had Richard Gomez. Yeah. Yeah, I recommend Rich. He's also... You don't want to look in this camera, dude. I I recommend (laughs) Rich Gomez. He's like Paul. Like, he's so fucking good. Like, I would love to drive him out to comedy on state because he's going to fucking murder up there. Uh, But, you know, he's a little hesitant, and I get it. Uh, Why is he hesitant? I don't know. I don't know. That's personal, I guess, but... He is fucking. He is so funny. Like I, I love watching him every time we're on a show together. Uh, yeah, I recommend Richard Gomez. Okay. Um. All right, man. Well, I'm gonna look this up. We're gonna take this picture, and it was very good talking. Yeah, man. Thank you for having me. Thank you.